Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers recreational marijuana, window tints, and passenger identification, and comes to us from Raul De La Cruz's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. In a video uploaded to YouTube on February 12th, 2021, Officer Hernandez of the Franklin Park Police stopped a driver for an alleged illegal window tint violation in Franklin Park, Illinois. Based on statements made during the interaction and comments on the video, it appears that the driver driver's name is Pedro Rios, and the passenger who was filming the interaction is named Raul De La Cruz, the apparent owner of the YouTube channel. Although I cannot confirm either individual's identity with certainty, for the sake of clarity, I will refer to the driver as Mr. Rios, and the passenger as Mr. De La Cruz throughout this episode. The uploaded footage begins immediately after Officer Hernandez stopped the vehicle. I know you're pulling me over for the tents again. Yeah, just my friends, bro. We just stopped at the Walgreens. I'm gonna go pay this and take them off. Like, I don't get why I keep getting pulled over for the same thing. I'm gonna take why? them off. Why? Because... I mean, the I, I didn't even do nothing. I was just leaving the Walgreens. Okay. I'm coming back to well, drop off my friend and I'm trying to get going with my know, life, you. you know? No, you know my truck, bro. No, Come I on. Don't. I really don't. You know, I'm not trying to do, I'm not up to nothing. I'm just trying to get on with my day, you know? I'm gonna pay the ticket, keep it going, and that's yeah, that. Simple. Take my tents uh, off. I'm at That's it, brother. I'm not up to nothing, you know? Just trying to get everything going, get on with my day. Yeah, definitely. You have a license on this? Yes, sir. Any more weed on you? No weed, brother. No? Okay. Nothing. You guys just smoke it? I can smell it. No, you know the, I smoked on this last night. Last night? I have three beautiful kids. I okay. do not smoke around them. When Officer Hernandez asks about the odor of marijuana emanating from the vehicle, Mr. Rios admits to smoking marijuana in his vehicle the night before. Although recreational marijuana use was legalized in Illinois in 2019 through the Cannabis Regulation and Tax Act, which was codified in Title 720 Act 550 of the Illinois Compiled Statutes, Section 10-35 of the Act clarifies that, quote, This Act does not permit any person to engage in and does not prevent the imposition of any civil, criminal, or other penalties for using cannabis in any motor vehicle. In addition to prohibiting the use of marijuana in a motor vehicle, Section 10-10 of the Act sets possession limits that establish the amount of marijuana an individual can legally possess. Given how recently recreational marijuana use was legalized, the case law applying the Act is limited. However, Illinois courts have consistently held that the legalization of small amounts of marijuana and medical marijuana does not impact the probable cause determination for the search of a vehicle. In the 2020 case of People v. Wheeler, the 2nd District Appellate Court of Illinois rejected an argument that the decriminalization of marijuana meant that, quote, the smell of cannabis no longer provides probable cause of criminal activity. In reaching its decision, the court noted that, quote, the piecemeal legislation has not decriminalized the possession and use of cannabis everywhere all of the time, and that before decriminalization, the Illinois Supreme Court had held in the 1985 case of People v. Stout that the smell of burnt cannabis coming from a vehicle provided probable cause to search both the vehicle and the driver. Ultimately, the Wheeler court concluded that, Quote, decriminalization of cannabis did not preclude the officer from relying on the odor of burnt cannabis as a basis for probable cause to search a vehicle. Applying the reasoning of this case law to this situation, and given the fact that marijuana use in a motor vehicle is specifically prohibited, a court in Illinois would likely conclude that the odor of marijuana emitting from the vehicle gave Officer Hernandez probable cause to search Mr. Rios and his vehicle. You get what I'm saying? Like Wait, I told you last you, time. Are you the one that pulled over that was, that yes, was speeding I, I, down? I, I, I'm showing you my ticket. Yes, I'm showing you my ticket, brother. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm just trying to get out oh, with my day. That's it. That's okay. why I told you that you not recognize me. No, I, I just. <laughs> You know, I'm just trying you to just get out with about my your kids. Day. And I'm like, yeah. Wait, you look like this guy. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, smoke no in front of my kids. No? I smoked okay. last night. That was that, man. You know, no nothing going on. You know. You got your license, anybody? Yes. Yeah. I'm the one that lives right here. Oh, you live here? Yeah. Okay. Don't you trap me up. He's the one that took me to Walgreens. I was literally about to go pay this too. I was just giving him a ride to the Walgreens, and that was that, man. No worries, man. I mean, I know you looked at me too, like. Well, I looked at the car. And I'm I know, like, I but can't see inside the car. I had you my know? window. Yeah, the window down. I had my window cracked. You mm -hmm. see me? It's cracked, but I still can't see inside the car, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's not cool, Can I see man. inside the car? 
For what? There's nothing I'm, in here, sir. No, I'm saying, can I see? Like, can you? If you're oh. standing outside, can you see inside the car? No, but I right, mean, I exactly. had my window cracked. You get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get another ticket. This, this, like, come on, you know, like, God. I'm already trying to get one out the way. I'm not trying to go through that stuff again, sir. You know. Mr. Rios reminds Officer Hernandez that he has already given him a ticket for the window tint and informs him that he was on the way to remove the tint when he was stopped again. While the law usually does not prohibit ticketing someone twice for the same violation if the issue with the vehicle has not been corrected, police officers and courts typically grant some leeway in allowing individuals a reasonable amount of time to fix the issue. However, in some states, such as California, officers will issue fix-it tickets for correctable violations such as illegal window tints, equipment issues, driver's license, or insurance violations and expired registrations. When a fix-it ticket is issued, the officer will provide the driver with a deadline to correct the violation, and if they do so before the deadline on the citation, the court will dismiss their case. In California, for an individual to prove that they have remedied the issue, they must have an authorized individual, such as a police officer, a DMV employee, or a court clerk, sign a Certificate of Correction and provide a copy of the signed document to the court. While it does not appear that Illinois issues formal fix-it tickets, judges will often and discretionarily dismiss traffic cases for correctable violations when the defendant can offer proof that they have fixed the problem. In some situations, it may be possible for individuals to pursue civil court actions against police officers that wrongly ticket them by suing them for malicious prosecution. However, courts generally do not favor malicious prosecution cases, and it is very challenging for an individual to successfully sue an officer under this cause of action. As the Illinois Supreme Court explained in the 2019 case of Beeman v. Friesmeyer, quote, to state a cause of action action for the tort of malicious prosecution, the plaintiff must prove five elements. The commencement or continuance of an original criminal or civil judicial proceeding by the defendant, the termination of the proceeding in favor of the plaintiff, the absence of probable cause for such proceeding, the presence of malice, and damages resulting to the plaintiff. The Beeman court also concluded that, quote, police officers may be subject to liability for malicious prosecution if they initiate a criminal proceeding by presentation of false statements or by withholding exculpatory information from the prosecutor. Given the serious requirements to prove a malicious prosecution claim, it would be nearly impossible for Mr. Rios to succeed in a case against Officer Hernandez, even if he had issued him another ticket. Like, I'm just trying to get this like out said, the way, take him off, you know, you see me, I see him. you literally just busted it. You yeah. see we made I eye start, contact. I started recording you. Right. Right, when you pulled, when up, you pulled when you in, the car I can't in. Even see you in do a, Sir, the car. come on, man. I'm I not trying, I'm not it's trying cool, to it's cool. anything. I got it know? on camera. I want to pay my ticket, take these tents right. off, and that's it. Go on with my thing. I'm not for what, sir? I'm not doing nothing wrong. For what, sir? For what? There's nothing wrong. I didn't do nothing wrong, sir. I can smell the weed coming from But there's, there's nothing, I'm telling you. You want me to step out? Come on, man. Like, I'm just trying if to go on my thing. Do you have a little bit of weed? Is no, it, there's no, no, This is all there was. This okay. is all there was in the car. Okay, then. You know, like, you're making my, you're, you know, like, I'm just trying to go, go on with my day, and, and you're, like, doing the most. Like, oh! For what, man? I didn't do nothing. Like, I... For what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna identify myself. I haven't done nothing wrong. Step you, out. you pulled him over. I know, step out. You pulled him over, boss. Okay, but well, I had to search the car, so step out. Um. Put your hands up here. No, well, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me, boss. There. Don't I, touch I, me. I, I haven't done you. anything wrong. Okay, I have not up. done anything wrong. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Jesus. It's cool, bro. Just file the complaint after the, I'm gonna the harassment. You know? Like, we, he literally seen me. We, we made eye contact. You can't make eye contact. <laughs> it's cool. A video. Yeah, a do. video speaks a thousand words, papas. We're good. You know, like. He literally made a left, busted it, and got right behind me. Alright. You gotta change those tips, my guy. Alright? All right. You're saying? Yeah, I get that, right. but that's not. You cool. hop back in the car? You know, like, I've been yes. honest yeah. with you, you know, we've Good. been since Good. Yeah, you excuse me. Get back in the car excuse me, excuse me. Oh, yeah. come, come over here. What's your name? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm straight. You go ahead. I'm cool. I'm gonna identify. You pulled him over. I'm not gonna right. identify. This well, is a an ID. Hold on. Here's the thing. I pulled you out the car and I searched you. Okay, so I need to identify you. No, yeah, I'm straight. Okay. Yeah, if it, if it would have been if you if it would have been a call, it, it would have been a different story. Since it's not a call, you just pulled him over. You pulled him over. You could ask him for hey. You're not gonna ask for my ID. I choose not to identify myself. Okay. I have not so done you, nothing wrong. So you you, you clearly you clearly searched you me. I have I have I nothing. You, I, I you, 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 
you pat me down, clearly I have nothing. I've done nothing, right. absolutely nothing wrong. Okay, so you want to so go I'm, a, a, I'm, I'm all right. After the search of the vehicle and its occupants is complete, Officer Hernandez demands that Mr. Dela Cruz identify himself, and Mr. Dela Cruz refuses. In most situations, passengers of vehicles that are detained during a traffic stop are not legally obligated to identify themselves. However, in situations where state law requires individuals to identify themselves during Terry stops, passengers may have to identify themselves when police officers have a reasonable suspicion that the passenger is involved in criminal activity. In the 2004 case of Heibel versus 6th Judicial District Court of Nevada, the U.S. Supreme Court upheld a conviction for obstructing an officer against a passenger who refused to identify themselves when a police officer had reasonable suspicion he was involved in criminal activity, holding that, quote, the principles of Terry permit a state to require a suspect to disclose his name in the course of a Terry stop. A state law requiring a suspect to disclose his name in the course of a valid Terry stop is consistent with Fourth Amendment prohibitions against unreasonable searches and seizures. However, even applying the Heibel standard, a court would likely conclude that Mr. Dela Cruz did not have to identify himself in this situation. Section 107-14 of Title 725 Act 5 of the Illinois Compiled Statute states the quote, A peace officer, after having identified himself as a peace officer, may stop any person in a public place for a reasonable period of time when the officer reasonably infers from the circumstances that the person is committing, is about to commit, or has committed an offense, and may demand the name and address of the person and an explanation of his actions. Although this statute is similar to the Nevada statute in Highbull in allowing officers to demand a suspect's name during a Terry stop, in the 2011 case of People v. Fernandez, the Second District Appellate Court of Illinois held that an individual, quote, could not be convicted of obstruction for merely refusing to identify himself and refusing to provide identification. In reaching this conclusion, the court compared the Illinois statute, which does not specifically require a suspect to identify himself, to the Nevada statute, which states that a lawfully detained individual, quote, shall identify himself. Even if Illinois required suspects to disclose their names, a court could easily conclude that Mr. Dela Cruz was not the subject of a Terry stop at the time Officer Hernandez demanded that he identify himself. For example, in the 2019 case of United States versus Landeros, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals held that a law enforcement officer may not extend a lawful traffic stop because a passenger refuses to identify himself, absent reasonable suspicion that the individual has committed a criminal offense. The court held that because the officers had no reasonable suspicion that the passenger had had committed an offense at the time they demanded his identification, they could not lawfully order him to identify himself. In this situation, because Officer Hernandez did not demand that Mr. Dela Cruz identify himself until after the search of the vehicle and its occupants had been completed, with no marijuana being found, there is a strong argument that Officer Hernandez did not have reasonable suspicion that Mr. Dela Cruz was involved in criminal activity. I'm all right. Is that what you want to do? You want to go back uh, I got you. If you want to go If you want to lawsuit, if you want a lawsuit, you can take it there. I've been recording you from the go. That's fine. Go back from the go. Yeah, I've been peaceful. You just want me to identify myself for absolutely no reason, papas. After Mr. Dela Cruz refused to identify himself, the officers allowed the men to get back into the vehicle and left the scene without further incident. Due to the limited information available about this incident, it is unclear whether Mr. Rios or Mr. Dela Cruz will be pursuing legal action. Overall, Officer Hernandez gets a C, because although he was likely within his authority to detain and search Mr. Rios and his vehicle, he attempted to identify Mr. Dela Cruz after verifying that no drugs were in the vehicle, threatened to arrest Mr. Dela Cruz for obstruction, and remain relatively rude and hostile throughout the encounter. There is a common sense argument to be made in favor of officers having the power to search a vehicle based on the smell of drugs. No one wants intoxicated drivers on the roads, but given the rapidly evolving legality of certain substances, it has been difficult for the complexities of the law surrounding the topic to catch up. Until then, there will likely be many misunderstandings regarding probable cause and the smell of marijuana in legalized states on the part of both officers and citizens. Once Officer Hernandez searched the vehicle, he had no reason to believe that Mr. Dela Cruz was involved in criminal activity, but that did not stop him from threatening to arrest Mr. Dela Cruz for obstruction. No effort was made to de-escalate until the other officers on the scene intervened, and Officer Hernandez opted to control the situation by threat of force, rather than attempting to find a peaceful resolution. Ultimately, 
Ultimately, no one was arrested, but Officer Hernandez certainly displayed questionable conduct and an unprofessional attitude. Mr. Rios and Mr. Dela Cruz collectively get an A. Because although Mr. Rios could have invoked his right to silence more tactfully, they both remained calm and collected throughout the encounter, and they handled themselves well under pressure. Mr. Rios appeared to claim that Officer Hernandez had previously ticketed him for the same violation, and he made a concerted effort to assure the officer that he intended to have the tint removed. Offering a legitimate explanation to an officer is not always detrimental to your interaction. However, Mr. Rios's admission to smoking in his vehicle was unnecessary and damaging in court. Mr. Dela Cruz did a great job of maintaining a balance between complying with the lawful orders of the officers and preserving his constitutional rights. Mr. Dela Cruz followed every order that he was required to obey and only challenged the officers when they attempted to exercise questionable conduct. I commend Mr. Dela Cruz for defending his Fourth Amendment rights without becoming overly aggressive or vulgar, and I commend Mr. Rios for remaining calm and honest throughout the encounter. Be sure to give your support to Mr. Dela Cruz's YouTube channel. You can find a link in the description below. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for more police interaction content.